In November last year, I thought everything was fine. Um, I enjoyed my job, got a great family, I was happy with life. But there was one thing that wasn't quite right, and that's that I was constipated uh, quite badly. And it got worse and worse throughout November. And it reached a point at the end of November where I found myself hospitalised because it was so painful. It's, it is the most pain I've ever been in. So it was horrible and I didn't know what was wrong and neither did the doctors. I mean, they thought it was constipation, but they weren't sure. Eventually, a couple of days later, I wake up from an operation to discover that the surgeon has cut me down the middle, uh, cut through all my stomach muscles, removed a foot of bowel uh, and given me a colostomy bag which for those of you who don't know, is where your bowel sticks out of your stomach. Bizarre situation to wake up and find. Anyway, um, I kind of got used to this, um, but I was thinking, well, it's okay. Um, I used to have nine foot of bowel. You probably have nine foot of bowel if you're watching this video. I only have eight now. Um, so I thought we can get used to these kind of situations. But in December, we came back to see the consultant and he gave us the full diagnosis of what was wrong. And we found out that it was cancer. Um, I've had bowel cancer. And in January uh, this year, 2013, I started chemotherapy. Uh, I'm still going and I've got one left to go. So I guess I'm looking back now on what this season of my life has been about, um, what's happened during it, and hoping to encourage you and share some of those insights. And I, start, I thought very early on, I guess it makes you reflect on everything, um, life and death and the tough stuff and the good stuff, what you value, your friendships. It makes you think about everything when something like that happens. But I thought there's so much, non in my mind, there's so much nonsense talk about positivity. There's so much vacuous talk in cancer about just trying to keep positive. Now I understand why people do that. But for me, I thought this feels empty because it just feels like trying to be positive for the sake of just being like up for stuff i don't know hopefully it'll help me with my recovery and i just thought that's not really rooted in anything i want to be able to root, root myself in something reliable and that's when i really realized my need for hope true hope so this year for me has been the year of hope which is unusual because it's not what you would think of for someone going through cancer but it really has been my hope has been focused more than it has ever been before on Jesus and uh, this book has been so good and I guess when you're going through really tough stuff I've discovered you need something reliable you can't just have nice things around you you need to be able to rely on something that's eternal and so the words written in this book the Bible just been amazing uh, I'd love to share one of those with you uh, the uh, in we find in Romans 15 verse 13 what a cracker of a verse this is you should get open a bible if you've got one or if you haven't look it up online romans 15 verse 13 it says may the god of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him which i've had to do this season trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the holy spirit and I just thought, that is what I want my year to be characterised by. I want it to be characterised by being full of hope, because, not because I just think I'm going to be positive about stuff, but because the Holy Spirit, who has power, lives in me, and I have a personal relationship with Jesus, who is the Son of God, and God created the universe, and he loves me, and he's my father. That's bonkers. That's amazing. <laughs> that's so good. Um, so I thought, that's what I'm going to root myself in, and I pray that for you as well. May the God of hope fill you to bursting with the power uh, of hope that's in the Holy Spirit. Um, but it made me think, this, all this stuff, what would I do differently now if I knew that I was going to die in a year's time, in two years' time? Because we don't know, do we? We don't know. None of us know. You don't know. I don't know when we're going to die. Um, there's a chance I might die before you because I have cancer and it might come back. But... Um, we don't know. I might live till I'm 85. You know, Winston Churchill lived as if he was going to die young because he, his father and his grandfather died young and he thought that he would as well. So he thought, right, I'm going to absolutely live with passion and drive because I probably haven't got much time. He later discovered that his father and his grandfather died of syphilis because they were sailors and it was a sexually transmitted disease. And so it wasn't hereditary, so he wasn't going to die of that and he died an old man. But he lived with the passion of someone who didn't have much time left. 
So did Jesus, so did Paul in the New Testament, who writes a lot of it, and so did so many people throughout Christian history because the, the threat of dying soon was real. We don't live in that context anymore, but some of us do. We get this sort of thing where we think, we, I actually might die pretty soon. And so to come to terms with that, to face the tr truth of how difficult that is, um, brought me to a place where I thought, I would live, if I knew I was going to live and die in a year's time, I would live today with more love, more forgiveness, more passion, more risk taking, uh, uh, more grace for people than ever before. Now the fact is I might die when I'm an old person. But then I thought, well that doesn't sound bad though, if I've lived my time on earth with more forgiveness of people, more grace, more love, more passion, more risk taking, that sounds alright to me. So I thought, that's, that's a gem, isn't it? I'm going to hold on to that, because that is how we, ca we can live life. And I believe that's what Jesus was kind of getting at when he was talking about having fullness of life. Um, I'd like to share a verse, another verse with you that's just so encouraging, um, because it, I guess as well, I was thinking, if I haven't got long, what am I going to do with my time? Uh, in Psalm 71, verse 17 to 21, it says, Since my youth, God, and I've been a Christian since I was a kid, since my youth, God, you have taught me. And to this day, I declare your marvellous deeds. Even when I'm old and grey, do not forsake me, my God, till I declare your power to the next generation, your mighty acts to all who are to come. And I thought, yeah, that is true. That's what I want to be like, right? Because um, I guess, why would you not share the best thing you've got? Why would you not share um, the truth if you've really d discovered it? And I believe I have. Um, the truth is we can have a personal relationship with God. That's unique to, to all religions. That's incredible and it's worth having. You can have a personal relationship with the creator of the universe who died for you because he loved you so much. That's amazing. And not only that, but he lives in you now. He breathed you into life and he continues to sustain your life and he, he can live in you. That's amazing. So why would I not tell as many people about that as I can? Because it's brilliant news, so I want to share it. I want to declare it to the next generation, and you might be the next generation. Um, but then he goes on to say in verse 19, Your righteousness, God, reaches to the heavens. You who have done great things, who is like you? You've made me see many trou troubles, many and bitter, from the depths, uh, but you will restore my life again. From the depths of the earth, you will bring me up again. You will increase my honour and comfort me once more. And my reading of that verse is not that um, God made me have cancer uh, and it's not that he will not let me die ever because that's not true, is it? We're all going to die. My reading of that is uh, that, he, that he says, even though you've seen troubles, you, even though you've been, I've been there with you as a personal friend and saviour. Um, and I will guarantee you eternal life with me. That's what Jesus allows us to have. Amazing, we can have permanent, eternal life with him. And there's real hope in that, isn't there? Now it's still difficult, there's still tough stuff, like if I die, I know where I'm going, but I don't want to leave a wife and two kids and a family and friends behind. And that's just difficult. And I don't have any easy answers for that one. But what I do have is eternal hope. And I know that my friends and family are able to join me on that. But there's still pain along the journey but there's comfort as well. And I guess as we go through the tough stuff in life, um, that's when we realize uh, that, uh, I guess the, when we go through the tough stuff in life, that's when we realize that we are able to bless others as we go. And that for me is pretty incredible. There's a verse in Psalm 84, verses five and six, and it says, blessed are those whose strength is in you whose strength is in him. And I feel I've put my strength in him. That's where I'm relying. I've had to rely on my strength from God. It says, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage, which is a journey towards God. I'm on a good journey towards God. I've set my heart on that course. As they pass through the Valley of Baca, which is like dark times, basically. When you pass through those times, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. And I thought, when I read that, 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 as I walk through this dark valley and make it out the other side, I hope, what I'm going to do is litter it with pools of hope, 
new springs spouting up where it previously was a barren land. Um, and whether that's in the chemotherapy ward, whether that's in uh, the news agent with someone I meet, whether it's someone at work, whether it's you who are watching this today, as I've walked through this valley, what I hope is to leave God pools of hope just all over the place so people are able to find fresh living water um, based in him. And I guess as I leave this season, like I said, I've got one more chemotherapy session left. As I leave this season, um, I can tell you I don't have any regrets for having cancer. I don't regret it. I wouldn't choose to have it. I don't recommend chemotherapy. It's, it's horrendous. Uh, but what I would say is I don't regret having cancer. I'm content with my life. I've reached a place of peace. Um, I'm, I'm happy to have new challenges, meet new people and all that stuff, but I'm happy with where I'm at. I feel more secure than ever before, which is probably why I'm able to wear this garish pink jumper with pride. <laughs> but um, my prayer for you is that your next year coming up would also be a year of hope, not a year of vacuous po um, positivity, but a year of rooted hope in our God.